Spirit ministry, where we help you to discover your God-given purpose, where we can empower you to know your destiny, to know, you know the, the, the vision what God has for your life. And I know uh, we're continuing our message series on who is the Jesus. And today we're going to do part three, uh, and be young, um, Girl, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna be assisting and helping. We have Ayana Carillo and Makeda Perez. How, how, how are we doing today? Yeah, good. Makeda, awesome. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and go into a word of prayer. And, we, and before we start the, the Q&A, we'll go ahead and pray. Um, my loving Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you today. Thank you for the Carillo family. Open up the home where we can have service. Where we can praise you, Lord, and just but believe in this video it will make an impact and for all the viewers are watching and I declare in Jesus name Amen Amen Amen, amen. amen. So today um, we're going to be the uh, Ayana Michaela is going to be giving me a, a Q&A and where well, you're going to learn about my story you know how do I overcome my obstacles how do I, I overcome my challenges and it just a lot a lot in my life purpose journey and I'm ready for the question. I'm excited. Now, who could be the first one to share the question? Me. Go ahead. Share with us how you experienced Christ in your life. Well, it go back the earlier years when I was in high school and I was working at McDonald's. And as you guys know, we were my manager. Um, I never forget, you know, um, I was working at McDonald's, I was cleaning the floor, I was mopping the floor. And and I remember that day I was going to take up trash at McDonald's. And, and I told myself, Lord, I want to do something greater. I want to, I want a purpose. You know, I want to do something that, I, um, you know, above you know, my potential. And that night, girl, um, oh, uh, um, I was school night, and I was watching TV very late at night, and I saw the TV show, the uh, TVN, and there was a show about Jesus. And I was so excited to order a Bible. So the Bible came in 2007, and I, I, I ordered a Bible, and it came, and I was in the cafeteria in, in high school and I was reading the Bible and I knew you understand the Bible for the principal introduced me to a teacher. So I went to go back to the classroom and the teacher told me a question, have you ever such a Christ in your heart? No. In May 22nd, 2007, I such a Christ in my heart. When I, when I stepped into church for the first time when I was 17 years old, I felt like, uh, like a calling in my life. I felt like a purpose. I felt like God calling me to do something greater. Amen. 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 I'm ready for question number two. Um, who has been your biggest, in, um, biggest inspiration? My biggest inspiration, uh, it go back to my earlier years, and I, I always look up to different pastors like Charlie Martinez and Abel Gomez, and, and you know, there's so many great communicators, and they, they, they inspire me, and then I, I saw a young pastor from Georgia named Jensen Franklin. He's a phenomenal speaker. He does a lot of youth conference, youth events. He does a ministry called Kingdom, uh, Kingdom Connection, and Jensen Franklin inspired me when I, I thought I found him in 2009, so he's been my biggest inspiration. This pastor has such amazing anointing and calling, so I follow him. He's been my biggest inspiration, Pastor Jensen Franklin. I'm ready for question number three. Okay. How did you overcome your challenges? Well, it's been, it's been a, bit, a big struggle. It's been really hard going with disability. I was born, I, I was hearing aids, I'm deaf, I'm blind. I got a little bit of vision, so I carry a magnifying glass. Uh, when I started to cry back in 2007, that summer I was going to um, Houston uh, for scoliosis where I have a, a hump in my back and it was very scary going to surgery. Don't you guys know that surgery is scary and when I went to surgery and, and the only thing that would encourage me is Jesus. Jesus is the one giving the strength, the perseverance, that helped me to overcome my challenges because there's so many wonderful scriptures in the Bible. I like what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians um, chapter 2, verse 9, and all I have seen, no ears have heard, no human mind can conceive what God prepared for those who love Him. Because I can't see tomorrow, next week, or next year, but God prepared for those that, that love Him. And that's what 
hope no one come by my challenge here because with disabilities, uh, it's a lot of obstacles and it's very hard because you know, knowing what my disability, I, I rely on Jesus. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12 or 2 that I set my eyes upon Jesus. He's an author and a finisher of my faith. So Jesus wanted to give me the strength to help me every single day. Um, I'm ready for the next question. Amen. Okay. What inspired you to start ministries? Back in 2008, I was attending a church called New Hope Ministry, and I, I'm always encouraged to meet a lot of you know, communicators and pastors and say, you can do it, you can make a difference, you can help people to find a purpose. So in 2009, I'll never forget, I was in my bedroom and, and I, I wanted to, to do something to help teenagers and preteens, like middle school and high school, I wanted to do something to make a difference. I'll never forget, in June 12, 2009, 11 years ago, God put in my heart to send Bible scriptures every single day for that text message. 11 years ago, that's like before Ayanna was born, but <laughs> man, I've been doing it so long and I believe it just helped, helped a lot of people because it opened so many doors. I started uh, Youth Connection Ministry in 2012, I started doing Youth 101 video in 2014, the school ministry and life purpose, but so um, it, was, it was just amazing that I, back in 2009, that, that the people that influenced my life just to help me. Awesome. I'm ready for that next question. What is your favorite Bible script? My favorite Bible scripture since the beginning it will always be Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3. Call upon me, I will answer you, and I'll show you the great and mighty thing. Because hmm. when I was in high school, um, I didn't really do much of anything in high school. I was football, I was choir, I was in McDonald's, and you know, I always wanted to do something, and I never knew that, you know, how much impact in my life what Jesus did. And when I was in high school, I was struggling with my grades and homework and assignments and, you know, working at McDonald's and just, uh, it, it was really hard. And then and I felt that when I put my upon upon him, because the Bible says in Jeremiah that I call upon Jesus, call upon me, and I'll answer you. And you know what? God continued to work in my life. He continued to, to help me grow, help me give me strength. Because I never knew I'll be doing a uh, youth conference, school ministry, or in, in, in encouraging middle school, high school students around the Rio Grande Valley, going to different middle schools and just uh, doing youth events and just unpacking them. And because Jesus is the one, because I encourage you, if you call upon Him, because you're very young, but if you start allowing God to work in your life, you can do some amazing things and greater things in your life. Because if I didn't know Jesus, I'll probably still be working at McDonald's and I'll still have we need to tell me, Jared, go on lunch break. That's my favorite part. When you say go on lunch break. You got that right. <laughs> All right, uh, what's the next question? Um, what plans do you see doing? Uh, do you see yourself doing in the future? What do I see myself doing? In the future, oh my goodness, man! I, I continue to right now. Um, I want to, I want to be, a, I want to continue being a field show advisor at the high school and middle school. I want to continue you know, doing church ministry and doing your connection. Uh, once the COVID will go away, I want to continue to travel around to middle schools and high schools and just you know, be a part of the teenagers and preteens to kind of encourage them. And uh, hopefully, you know, um, I feel myself. You know, growing in the Lord and, and hopefully, you know, taking care of my eyesight and my hearing and just to, in the five or ten years, I, I hope I can find someone special in my life, you know, I'm praying. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but overall, um, what I can see, I'm, uh, number one is church ministry, number two, middle school and high school, and number three, I want to continue to, you know, just to be faithful and just to be there for you and, 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 and Michaela when you guys in high school and and you're in Kinsinetta and we can't get older and I'll continue to be there for both of you. Mm -hmm. I'm ready for the next question. What advice would you give someone that is in school having a hard time? My advice when I, when I did counseling with middle school girls, now I want to say middle school girl because what I noticed a lot, everything is about appearances. They always got to look at their appearances because it's about insecurity, they feel unworthy, they feel that they're struggling, and 
maybe they, they feel a lot of challenges. My advice is to always encourage them with, with four points. Number one, your private preparation leads to your public demonstration, meaning that if you work really hard, if you become successful, if you achieve all your goals and all, all your plans, then, and I believe you can do it because the Bible says in Philippians 4.13 that you can do all things for Christ that give you strength. Number one and number two is pursuing your passion. Pursue it because when you when you set your mind to something greater, if you set your mind to achieve your, your goals, to go out there, you know, to find something that what you, want, you want to do. Maybe you want to do education or you want to do sports or you want to do fine arts or you want to be a creative, you know, communicator, to go out there to be all you can be because I know middle school right now is, is a hard age because you're, you're trying to find who you are as a person. You're trying to find that, you know, trying to fade in. I know what, in, in middle school there's a lot of gossip, there's a lot of, you know, um, people that like pick on other people, but, but if you continue to stand firm and to, to be, you know, you have to keep setting your eyes straight and allow Jesus to do the work in your heart. And then number three is don't give up. Don't give up. Because I know uh, as middle school kids and high school, even elementary, you know, uh, you're growing at, at such a young age, but yet if you set your mind to do something greater because the Bible says in Proverbs 13 verse 20, so what would the wise you become wise? God is not working in your life it's for your heart, for the desire, because he loves you so much, and I want you to achieve the goal. And number four is be all you can be. If you continue to surround yourself with people that encourage you, that going to help you to keep pressing forward to the goal, and knowing that you can achieve, and I know one day that you're going to walk down that aisle and get your high school diploma, and I'm going to be pursuing college or a job or you set your mind anything you can do. That would be my advice. That's true. Amen. What is your favorite story in the Bible? My favorite story is always been in Genesis chapter 8 when Noah, when, when, when Noah, uh, uh, it talks about the flood, and Noah was stranded, and they were trying to find land, and the, the first bird that Noah let go was a raven, but the raven never came back. And then Noah, he let go of the dove. Then the dove came back with an olive leaf. That, see, I like that story because in life perfect ministry, there's a purpose. When, when Noah let go of the dove, there's a purpose when the dove came back. And what had happened to Noah and his family, all the animals that were in the ark, they, they found them. What area in your life Jesus helped you? Well, there are a few things that Jesus helped me. I know number one that Jesus helped me a lot with my eyesight. You know, it, it's hard. Now, it, uh, if you can cover your, your left eye, so, now if you can you know, close your right eye a little bit, that's what I see every single day. Because the Bible says in Psalms 119, 105, that God's word is not to my feet and the light to my path because I rely on Jesus to guide me. I gotta rely on him to, to help me because being blind and being deaf and with hearing aids, it, it, it's hard. But the Bible always says in Joshua chapter 1 verse 9, be strong, be courageous, don't dismay yourself, for the Lord your God for you wherever you go. And I like what I say my dad, that nothing cannot stop God's plan for your life. Nothing because Jesus is what is it, gonna help me to be different telling Disability. I always tell myself, I'm maybe disabled in the world, but I'm able to God. Amen. Amen. Are you ready for the next one more question? Um, that's it, but I'm going to ask you uh, a question. Who told you about God and it, Jesus? It was Mr. William Ashley. He was a biology teacher in high school, and he helped me. He discipleship me. He baptized me. And I'll never get my baptism because it was back when I was 13 years old and they put me in the water and they put me back out. And then what happened, they put me back in the water again. They gave me a double dip. I'm like, oh man, I thought I'll baptize it. But yeah, I was Mr. William Ashley today. He's the youth pastor at the Man at the Baptist Church in McCadden. And he helped me for today. I'm helping 
middle school and high school teenagers to train them with the Bible, helping them to, to be, you know, to, to, to unlock their potential. They will meet the William Ashley, led me to the world. And what do you like about the Bible? The Bible is just a beautiful collection of books that, that helped me to give me insurance for the future. The Bible is a great way to to encourage me every day. I'm sure that when you and uh, uh, Michaela, when you read the Bible for every morning, and I hope it does encourage you as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is that is that all the questions? Or? Yeah. Awesome. So um, as you guys know, we're gonna be doing. I'll, I'll be doing a Q and A with Ariana, Michaela, and August. We will be talking about goals. So I know you're going to be stepping into middle school next year, and Michaela, it's going to be your last year at eighth grade, and I know, <laughs> uh, I know you're looking forward to being in high school. Right? High school, it's, it's a lot of fun in high school, Friday night barbecue games and pep rally and school dances and the man. So in August, we're, um, we're going to be talking to Ayana and Michaela about goals. But you know, um, I want to say thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Um, you and Michaela for helping me out with the church ministry. I've been at it for 11 months, and it's going to be one year in April 27. But uh, I'm very excited to be part of your life, to see you grow, and to see you, you know, be the powerful woman God that you are called to be. And man, even in that game, the hockey will be up here by the people are still to be. Man, so I want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you, uh, viewers out there. I hope you learned about my story. and. I hope that you're blessed. And next week we're gonna we're gonna continue in Colossians chapter one. But um, you know, we're, we're, I know yesterday I talked about the the invisible God. So now we're gonna continue the next week on the 19th of April. We're gonna continue on Colossians chapter one, teaching of the Bible. And thank you so much, Ayana and Michaela. And we're looking forward to see you in August. Get ready for the for the Q&A and both. But amen. So God bless you guys. We're honored. I have an honor we need to, to, to close in prayer. All right. Close your eyes. Lord Father, I thank you uh, for this wonderful day today that we had with Jared and uh, my daughters, Michaela and Ariana, participating. Lord Father, I ask Father God just to seek protection in our lives, Father God, that no weapon, shape, or form against us shall prosper, Father, and just to continue to. Uh, uh, to uh, you know, to strength to be in our hearts, Father God, and just to you know overcome adversity, Father God, and just continue to fulfill us with the Holy Spirit, Father, and continue us to walk forth with you, Lord. Uh, we thank you for everything that you do for us, Lord. Continue to bless us, and uh, we're forever grateful, Father. And in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you. See you next week. Take care.